good morning, everyone. I want to introduce you, George, with the Hectapod project. Give him a warm welcome. Thank you. So, uh, indeed, I am here to speak about the Heptapod project, which is, uh, as you can see, uh, just uh, adding support uh, for Mercurial to GitLab. Um, so, maybe first I should remind uh, everyone what GitLab and Mercurial are, even though maybe you've heard of them. So, uh, GitLab is a fully integrated uh, forge. That's a place where people can push their code and collaborate. It is uh, heavily based around Git with uh, workflows uh, based on a merge request. It has issue trackers. Uh, it has a built-in continuous integration and continuous deployment system. Um, it has many, many other features like a Docker registry, uh, built-in SSO server and client uh, integration with external services. In short, it's a really, really big beast um, which um, can be used for almost all aspects of uh, software development. So I'm not here to present GitLab, uh, make this clear, uh, but um, so it's a well-known big system based uh, on Git. Now, um, speaking of licenses, uh, it, has, it, is, uh, it is open core, so it has a community edition, which is itself uh, released under the MIT license, I believe. And uh, uh, recently, it's been adopted by some major free software projects, like, uh, for instance, Debian, who's using a customized version of GitLab now, and uh, the Nomi pro project, and probably a few big, uh, big more. And also, it has uh, commercial offers. It, it is a company uh, with uh, a SaaS uh, system and uh, on-premises um, uh, offerings. Now, let's speak uh, a bit about Mercurial. So, what Mercurial is, is, well, another uh, distribution, um, um, distributed uh, version control system. Uh, the command line is uh, HG, which is uh, just a symbol for the Mercury element uh, in chemistry. So, uh, compared to Git, it's uh, about, uh, well, uh, the project started uh, right at the same time for the same kind of use cases, like kernel development. Uh, it is written in Python with uh, some boost from C code and uh, most recently uh, with uh, Rust code uh, to boost it further. If you're interested in that, don't miss uh, Raphael's talk in the Rust dev room this afternoon. Uh, and being written in Python, uh, it's, uh, custom it's, it's customizable with a plugin system that we call extensions. Uh, <coughs> historically, we had uh, an online provider. Think of it as uh, maybe it was the GitHub of uh, Mercurial, and that was Bitbucket. Uh, when they started Bitbucket, they were supporting uh, Mercurial only, and only later did they add uh, the Git support. Now, uh, the big news uh, today in the Mercurial community is that uh, last summer, Bitbucket announced that they would um, uh, sunset Mercurial support. So, uh, you know, sunset, to me, it's, uh, it's like, you know, something, something beautiful, uh, something peaceful, um, um, a nice end to a nice day, right? Uh, but what's happening now uh, is, well, yesterday, actually, I didn't check, but yesterday, uh, it was the last day, or maybe the first day, where you wouldn't be able to create Mercurial repositories on Bitbucket anymore. And, what? Well, so, okay, but uh, more worrying, um, before uh, next June, uh, Bitbucket will remove actually all their Mercurial content, uh, well, according to the official communication, the one about Synthetic. Uh, so it means that uh, we have to react in a hurry, and uh, people who are uh, archiving uh, the history uh, of code, uh, like uh, the software heritage, have to uh, work really fast so that we don't lose uh, the valuable uh, uh, work that many people have, have been doing. So, in short, yeah, it was pretty much like that, rather than a peaceful sunset. Okay, so now to the main subject of the talk, 
Mercur um, heptapod is about um, uh, bringing Mercurial to GitLab. So technically, this is a fork. This is a, fl a friendly fork. Uh, we have good uh, relation uh, with uh, the people uh, at GitLab. Uh, it's about two years old. Uh, well, it started, of course, as a crazy ID and then a crazy prototype. Um, and it's, uh, if you want to try it, you can uh, download the Docker image or you can try uh, the uh, installation from the sources. And the big news today for us, uh, because it's been lots of work, uh, is that we are announcing a free uh, Heptapod hosted service for a free and open source software project. Um, so this is a, the, a partnership between Octobus, that's my company, the company I work for, and Clever Cloud, which uh, is a small hosting company specialized in IPAS um, uh, products. And that means that, uh, well, today we can uh, invite any uh, free software project that is using Mercurial and uh, especially those that are uh, fleeing Bitbucket. Um, this is a community managed service. To be fair, uh, we didn't write all the rules right now, but uh, we, we hope to do that in a collaborative way. Uh, for now, it's still uh, not so big, but uh, we are growing and we are inviting you, the free software developers, to come to us. Uh, of course, since we are two very small companies, there are some restrictions, there are some priorities because of the urgency of Bitbucket, but um, come to us and we'll discuss them, and this is all public information anyway. And later on, we'll start a commercial service too, which uh, should fit all the needs. So, so now, um, the question is, uh, how is that possible? You know, you take GitLab, which is GitLab, and you want to replace Git by Mercurial. Uh, well, first, Git and Mercurial are not so different. Um, from a user perspective, you handle commits. And a, and a commit is identified by, by the hash. It has an author, it, ha it has a um, commit message. Um, and at the end, you get this kind of graph, technically called a uh, DAG. So not so much different. The main difference is how you actually pick the commits you want to display. So it's around the notion of branch, which is really different between Mercurial and Git. But for that, we have a mapping, and uh, GitLab is happy, and it's okay, it works. Also, this is not supposed to be readable, don't worry. This is a, a component diagram of the whole of GitLab. As I said, it's a big beast. And circled in red are the parts that are actually relevant. And no surprise, the architecture isn't stupid. So uh, I, actually, it's quite it's not so much compared to uh, the whole picture. Now, this is lots of work, and I've invited you uh, for software developers to use the service. Now I'm inviting you to contribute, of course. Um, so uh, if you like rich environments, diversity, um, integration challenge, then you can uh, play with uh, four or five, I don't know, uh, different programming languages. Uh, different database uh, storage or storage systems, different protocols, and even uh, a built-in configuration manager. Um, so it can be complex, but in my experience, it's rewarding to work to help uh, our fellow developers uh, because, uh, well, we have natural closeness to that. And last but not least, there are many small issues that can be tackled almost right away, like uh, changing a page which which explain how to merge for, with Git and not with Mercurial. That's easy, and uh, you can help people with that. Um, so to finish, uh, I'd like to just underline a few points. How is that you know, even relevant anymore to use Mercurial in, two, um, in 2020? Um, well, Mercurial is easy to learn, and um, it's especially important for beginners, you know, the kind that haven't used any uh, version control system in their lives. So typically young students or people that are coming from other areas, like, uh, or uh, I don't know, graphic designers, uh, you can do many, th many interesting things with them. 
uh, as I said in the beginning, it's really flexible because uh, you have a whole ecosystem of uh, extensions written in Python, which can be used by large organizations to uh, implement uh, specific workflows, or it could be used to uh, simplify things uh, in some cases. Well, it's, it's, it's really uh, quite a world. It also has uh, excellent scalability properties. Uh, that's something not so well known because being written in Python when you start Mercury, at first it's, it feels a bit slower than Git. But uh, if you have one million commits, then uh, often uh, you know, it goes the other way around. It has a very powerful query language, which is really useful to me. It's a whole language of, uh, in its own. And last but not least, um, it has an innovative uh, non-destructive non and shared um, uh, history editing capability, uh, which in turn, I think, uh, can be used to bring more and more automation. I'm thinking of automatic rebasing and uh, cherry picking down the, down the right way, um, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It's really, really powerful. It's really interesting. So, um, so this work has been sponsored by um, a bunch of really small companies. I mean, the, big, the biggest one may, may have 20 employees. And uh, thank you for your, your attention. Um, and I'm ready for your questions. I hope you have many. Questions? What is a roadmap of Heptavote? I mean, it will be eventually merged into GitLab sales base, or it will be a separate project with separate goals and separate life cycle, I don't know. Uh, do I have to repeat the question? No, you were on the microphone. Um, so we'd like to merge it back uh, with GitLab, of course. Uh, for now, it's a bit early. Uh, we are not in the best position to do that right away, but I'm, uh, I hope I could uh, start uh, upstream patches, like for instance um, for the Bitbucket import system, where, which has been obviously more important for us. Um, and later on, I suppose, well, it, it depends on, um, on the success uh, of the platform. Um, if the GitLab people want to take it, uh, we'll do our best to uh, stream it, that's for sure. Um, but it's, it's a bit early, so see you next year, and uh, maybe we can uh, be a bit more concrete about that. Okay, more questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Um,